My head is all white and my hair is all white. Hello, I'm Samantha and I'm really bad at introducing things so we're just gonna make this intro short. So I've realized that I have not actually made a video going into the details of my cancer diagnosis. And this is a question that I get a lot from people so I thought that I would share that on here. This video is just gonna go into the specifics of the diagnosis and the treatment that I will be doing. If you would like to know more about how I found out I had breast cancer and all the process like leading up to the diagnosis, I have another video about that and you can click up here to watch it. So a lot of people ask me, aren't you too young to have breast cancer? And yeah, but I do, so no. <laughs> breast cancer is really rare in women under 40. So obviously that makes it even rarer for women under 30 and people in their teenage years and all of that. But it still does happen. So if you think you might have breast cancer, get it checked out. Normally when breast cancer happens in younger women, well, it doesn't usually happen, but when it does, it's a really aggressive form of breast cancer. So if you are young and you think you might have breast cancer, that's even more of a reason to go get it checked out. Thankfully for me, I do not have a very aggressive form. It's very common in older women. I've got all the details on my phone here, so I'm going to be reading from it. So on March 7th, 2019, I was diagnosed with invasive ductal adenocarcinoma. And mine, I guess, has some micropapillary features. <laughs> and it is grade two, not stage two. There are differences in uh, the meaning of stage and grade that um, other people can explain. I'll link a video down below that explains that more. Grading is based off of three different scores and they all have to do with the cancer cells. My cancer is also estrogen and progesterone receptive. <laughs> It's hormone receptive. People know what that means. It's HER2 negative. So what the heck do all those things mean? Basically all that is pretty good news, I would say. The fact that it's hormone receptive just means that it is able to be controlled by hormone therapy. It's using those hormones to grow, so if I can take a pill or something to stop those hormones, then the cancer can't use that as fuel to keep growing. Invasive ductal carcinoma is a very common type of breast cancer. It's basically when stuff just goes wrong inside the milk ducts, the tumor uh, starts in there and breaks out and just cancer. <laughs> this is what cancer does, apparently. <laughs> the tumor in my left breast was 3.5 by 3.5 centimeters. Um, just based on what they could see on the ultrasound and by feeling it and measuring it. The first day that I went into that office, they checked to see if it had spread to lymph nodes. So they did an ultrasound under my arm and the doctor found two lymph nodes that looked abnormal. So a biopsy was done on those and yes, the cancer had spread to those lymph nodes. They did find that there was an area that lit up on the PET scan around one of my ribs, near my spine basically, that they weren't really sure what it was. Normally, if they want to figure out if you have cancer in that part of your body, they will do a biopsy on it. The spot is in such a hard spot to biopsy that it is actually safer to just go through with treating the spot as if it had cancer than to actually do the whole surgery that would need to happen to biopsy the area. So I will actually have to have some laser radiation or something on that spot. I don't really know the specifics of it just because it's kind of far down the line now and I don't think they've really decided exactly what they want to do. So that's all the details of what is actually wrong with me. <laughs> what does this mean for treatment? Basically there's four steps. First is chemotherapy, yay. Two types of chemotherapy. First, I had to go through AC, which is adromycin and cytoxin. I had four rounds of that and they were on every other Friday. If you wanna know more about AC, I got another video about that. Oof. You feel awful when you're on that stuff. Then after AC chemo, I had to switch to a different type of chemotherapy, which is Taxol. I have to do Taxol every week for 12 weeks. And so far I have gotten through eight of those treatments. Taxol still kind of sucks because it's still chemotherapy and you still kind of feel a little bit gross after. But it is a million thousand bajillion times better 
than AC. <laughs> they mentioned to me that I might not get through all 12 rounds of the Taxol because one of the side effects of Taxol is that it can cause tingling in your fingertips and your toes. If that got too bad, they would stop the Taxol because they don't want me to have permanent nerve damage. Really nice of them to think about me like that. And I actually do not have bad neuropathy. It happens every once in a while, but it's not very consistent and it only lasts a few seconds. So they're thinking that I will get through all 12 rounds of it, which is really good because I would like to kill as much of the cancer as possible. <laughs> After chemotherapy, we move on to the second part of treatment, which is surgery. They want to remove the tumor and some of the lymph nodes that are affected. And basically there are two options for surgery. You can either have a lumpectomy where they just remove the tumor, or you can have a full mastectomy where they take out the entire breast tissue. And I have not completely fully decided what I'm going to do on that. The doctors from the very beginning recommended a double mastectomy. If they get rid of all of the breast tissue, there is just a lower chance of the cancer coming back. And since I'm so young and I have so many more years left to live, they recommend me just getting rid of everything that could possibly make cancer come back. And then there's reconstruction that comes with that, basically figuring out what kind of implants to put back in there or uh, how to take tissue from other parts of my body to put in there. More videos will be coming on all of these topics. And then the third step in the process is radiation. I think about a month of radiation, or 33, 35 days. Basically just another measure in there to make sure the cancer doesn't come back. So after I do all of those three things, I will finally be done <laughs> going to the hospital for a while. And then the fourth part of my treatment is hormone therapy. As I mentioned before, my cancer was hormone receptive positive. I will be taking pills to block estrogen for, I think they're recommending 10 years. Yes, yeah, so that's basically it. All the details of my breast cancer and how I'm going to treat it. Hopefully this was helpful for my friends and family that are asking this and wanna know more specifically about how I'm doing. I'm here to let you guys know that I'm not gonna die. <laughs> Like I said, this is a very common type of breast cancer, so the treatment that I'm going through is a very normal treatment that a lot of people also do. But everyone's cancer is special. Hopefully this was helpful for anyone that is in a similar situation to, to me or anyone who just wants to know more about cancer. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to follow along with my cancer adventures. Check out some of the other videos I've done and check out my special Instagram that I have created to document my cancer journey, I guess. Um, yeah, that's it. So, goodbye. <laughs>